In the United States is a land of tremendous contradictions. The escaped slave and great abolitionist uh, leader Frederick Douglass once said that when it comes to hypocrisy, America reigns without rival. No country in the world raises its rhetoric and promises of freedom, liberty, and equality higher and has as its actual practice baser and more degraded and brutal and disgusting practices at the same exact time. In, in my view, if you had to say, is there one human being who embodies these contradictions, the hopes and the actual horrors, the one person who completely embodies that right now is our president, Barack Obama. On the one hand, you're talking about the President of the United States as a man of African descent. And yet, while he presides, while he reigns, we have more people of his complexion behind bars than were slaves in 1850. Shame. It's shameful. Shame. We have over two million human beings in cages, I think more than any society ever in the history of the planet. And all of the things that are buried down of the people of all the wrong complexions in the United States, the police, the prisons, the courts, etc., has not eased up one iota during his time. His middle name is Hussein. And yet people with that exact same name fear for their lives because of unmanned aerial drones sent on his orders to their countries, repeatedly dropping weapons of death on them. His father, please don't clap for that. Australia. <laughs> His father is an immigrant, and yet he is deporting immigrants from the United States at a rate faster than his predecessor, George W. Bush. I believe now he's deported 1.4 million people from the United States, an unprecedented figure. Now, the people, the constituency he's been most loyal to, the bankers, people like Goldman Sachs, they're doing great. In fact, Goldman Sachs is profit, you know, the bank, their, their, their profits uh, from last year have trebled in the last year. They're three times as high. And he has teamed up with some of the richest and most powerful people in the United States to go, you know, the, the geniuses who gave us the 2008 subprime mortgage meltdown. I now have a new project, which is very close to my heart, which is their project to remake public education in their own image to restructure it completely in line with their neoliberal priorities. That's what they're doing now. And, and uh, one of yours is among this project. Uh, what's his name? Rupert. Uh, he said, and I paraphrase, uh, K through 12 education is a $500 billion market in the US alone just desperately waiting to be revolutionized. Yes, Rupert, we're just desperately waiting for you to come and revolutionize K through 12 education. And so, of course, one of the primary obstacles for that project are teacher unions. People like me, teachers who are in unions. Um, many, many, many of us in the United States are in unions. And so we've seen, to go along with this campaign, a campaign of vilification of teachers in the mainstream media in the United States. It's a very convenient narrative for this recession. It goes a little something like this. If you want to find someone who's trustworthy, somebody who's selfless, who only thinks about others, somebody who really cares about the children of America, then you've got to find yourself a billionaire. <laughs> somebody like Bill Gates. You know, there was a line in that movie, uh, Waiting for Superman, it was like, Bill Gates cared so much about America's children that he testified before Congress. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> How about Brian Jones cared so much about education that he showed up to work every day with children? <laughs> Nine years. <laughs> but, the, yes, I did show up. but the flip side of it is that if you want to know who's a real jerk, you know, who's a real piece of work, who's selfish, who only thinks about themselves, the word greedy comes to mind. You're talking about a teacher. <laughs> you know, there you can't trust them. <laughs> Especially can't trust them with kids. <laughs> you know, what we really need are more billionaire teachers. Really, that's what we need. Now, if you just watch television, and my impression is that actually you do watch quite a bit of American television. If you just watch American television, you get the idea that these are you know, wildly popular ideas. But we have to understand that they have been importantly punctured um, and, and discredited in large, for large parts of, of the population. Um, I'm thinking in particular of places where teachers themselves have stood up to all of this nonsense and fought back. You see, that's a, that's a lesson for us. When you stand up for yourself, 
you win other people to your side. Frankly, when you stand up for yourself, it's not until you stand up that there is a side for them to join. And you think about the teachers in Seattle at one single school who said, you know what, the tests are stupid. We're not going to administer them. We're not going to give them. They risk their jobs. The staff at entire school, at one school in Seattle, risk their jobs refusing to administer the standardized test. And did the public join in in the vilification of teachers when they tried that? No. It went the other direction. The public protected those teachers. That was in January. To this day, even though they were insubordinate, even though they disobeyed direct orders to administer the test, they have been unable to punish those teachers. <laughs> Sorry, the peas are really popping on this microphone. <laughs> more, more importantly was the strike of 30,000 teachers in the third largest school district in the United States. I'm talking about the Chicago teacher strike from last fall. <laughs> they stood up to Obama's right-hand man in Obama's hometown during an election year. This is really a badass strike. And they proved that it was possible to, to fight back against all of this and win. And of course, when Ronald Emanuel and the mayor, when everybody threw everything they had at the union, did the public go along with this idea? You see, it's why it's important to interrogate whether or not these are really popular ideas. Actually, the more the mayor criticized the union, the more the public supported the union. Again, overwhelmingly African Americans, overwhelmingly people who had kids in the public schools, overwhelmingly the public and increasingly the editorials and the newspapers came dragging along, supported the Chicago Teachers Union, and they won in their strike. A very important struggle.